estadistikako nazioarteko mintegiaren hogeita zazpigarren edizioa. Datu administratibo eta kontabilitatekoen erabilpena estadistika ekonomikoetarako. Mintegian behin baino gehiagotan erabili da datu administratiboen gaia. Azkena, 2007-an erregistroen bat egiteaz, zakotzen aritu ginelarik. Handikona, esan dezakegu garapen handia lortu duela eustaten fitxategi administratiboen erabilpenak. Berrogeita emeretzi dira berreki onetxitako 2007 estadistikako Euskal Planaren fitxategi administratiboetan, soilik oinarrituta eragiketak, eta berrogeita amasortzi izaera mistodunak, inkestetan ere oinarritzen direnak. Eragiketa kopuru A aziz joan da urteekin, bi arrasoi funtsezkoaren gatik, kostuen murrizketa eta informatxaileen txako erantzun zamaren aritzea. Bi biak giltxarri kalitatezko eta estadistikak ekoizteko. Hoi damos comienzo a la vigésimo séptima edición del Seminario Internacional de Estadística, que está dedicado a la utilización de los datos administrativos y contables para estadísticas económicas. El tema de los datos administrativos ha sido tratado en otras ocasiones dentro de los aproximadamente 57 cursos que se ha impartido en este seminario. En la última ocasión, en 2007, se, que se dedicó a profundizar las técnicas de fusión de registros. Desde aquel año a nuestros días, podemos afirmar que la utilización de ficheros administrativos en Eustat ha alcanzado un alto grado de desarrollo. Son 59 las operaciones del Plan Vasco de Estadística 2014-2017, recientemente aprobado, las basadas exclusivamente en ficheros administrativos y otras 58 de carácter mixto, basado en datos administrativos y encuestas. El número de estas operaciones se han ido incrementando a lo largo de los años por dos razones fundamentales, la reducción de costes y la reducción en la, en la carga de respuesta para los informantes. Ambos aspectos clave en la producción de estadísticas de calidad en estos momentos y diría más en la propia supervivencia de las estadísticas. Estas dos razones son las que han animado en el ámbito de la estadística oficial, tanto vasca como europea, a profundizar en la metodología de tratamientos de los datos administrativos y especialmente en el caso de los datos económicos de tanta actualidad en este momento. Es también cierto que todas estas metodologías están eh, todavía desarrollándose y es, eh, y es relativamente reciente las referencias bibliográficas sobre el tema aunque ya existe un proyecto europeo que impulsa Eurostat, donde se están acumulando un gran número de trabajos y experiencias en la materia, de las cuales se dará a buen seguro cuenta en este curso. En el planteamiento de este seminario subyace la idea que la utilización de los datos administrativos en la producción estadística, bien de forma exclusiva o bien eh, combinado con encuestas, Supone, como ya estamos viendo en, en otras experiencias europeas, la reingeniería de las operaciones y el reaprendizaje de nuevos métodos. En definitiva, una nueva ma manera de producción eh, de las estadísticas. Es por ello que en este curso eh, hay un nutrido grupo de técnicos especialistas de diferentes ámbitos de Eustat, que tratarán de ir haciendo realidad en sus encuestas algunas eh, de las ideas que, así, que aquí se desarrollen. Para profundizar en toda esta metodología de utilización de datos administrativos en las estadísticas económicas, tenemos con nosotros a un reconocido experto en la materia, Daniel Lewis, jefe de metodología computación y computación estadística de la Oficina Nacional de Estadística de Reino Unido. Ya lleva 13 años trabajando en el ámbito de las estadísticas dirigidas a empresas y abordando temas relacionados con la estimación de la varianza, diseño y estimación de encuestas, de muestras, tratamiento de valores atípicos, edición e imputación, y estudiando métodos para aumentar el uso de los ficheros administrativos. 
Quiero agradecer a Daniel Lewis eh, su disponibilidad a participar en este, en este seminario. Igualmente, nos, comple nos complace a Eustad poder contar una vez más con un grupo tan nutrido de profesionales, más de 50, del mundo de la estadística oficial, de la universidad, de la administración y del mundo de la empresa. Y esperamos que este curso cumpla con todas vuestras expectativas. También os animo a, a que aprovechéis la diversidad de organizaciones que estamos en este momento para poder entablar relaciones e intercambiar experiencias entre todos. Dado que hay un número tan nutrido de, de profesionales de Eustat, el resto también podéis aprovechar la oportunidad de plantearnos pues, cualquier aspecto que os interese conocer de nuestras operaciones o bien de nuestra organización. Bukacheko, eskertunai nisueke, unibertsitatekoei, estadística oficialean lan egiten dutenei, eustatekoei, administrazioikoei, empresa arloko partaidekoei, ikastaro honetan parte hartzea espero dugu. Bi egun haueta lan egingo duzuen aprobetxagarria izatea. Finally, I like to thank Daniel to can give us to this meeting, and I hope you enjoy your time in the Basque Country. So first, thank you very much for inviting me here to give this uh, seminar. It's a great uh, privilege and honor uh, to be here for these next two days to tell you uh, all about admin data for economic statistics, um, because I'm. Uh, First language English speaker. I tend to speak quite quickly, so I'm going to try very hard to go slow. But if I ever get carried away, feel free to uh, throw your hand in the air and tell me to slow. <laughs> um, okay, so um, we start with some introduction. So just to begin with, um, we have a little introduction, just tell you what the course will contain. Um, so it's all about the use of administrative and accounts data for economic statistics. Um, and I'm sure you just heard all about me from the introduction, so I won't repeat my uh, history. Um, so of course this is a growing topic in official statistics. Um, when we were walking over from my hotel this morning, I was hearing that this is something we must do. It's expected of us when we are producing statistics, we need to use admin data. Um, and there's really a big uh, push from um, both from sort of Eurostat, um, but also from the public. There's just an expectation that because government collects information from people, from businesses, from all sorts of different official sources, um, it's expected we're going to make use of this data when we produce statistics, rather than just relying on the traditional um, surveys that we use for historically for official statistics. Um, the use of admin data itself isn't a new thing, actually. Um, it differs between countries. I know in the UK, we used to use admin data uh, maybe 30 years ago, before we actually had lots of the surveys which we use now for economic statistics, um, because we didn't have the money to run surveys, so we just used all of these admin sources. In reality, back then, the quality was very poor. We didn't do very much to understand what the difference was between the admin source and the information we actually wanted for statistics, but we were forced from lack of budget to, that was all we could do. Um, so it's, it was already happening, um, but of course the difference now is we want to use admin data and also have good quality statistics, and this is where we have a challenge. Um, of course, it's also not new to use admin data as a, a source of auxiliary information. Um, it's commonly used a couple of sources to update the business register, um, and this information is then used uh, to help produce more efficient statistics. And we'll just touch on um, some of the ways that's used as we go through the course. Um, probably you already know most of it, but just a reminder as we go through that admin data itself, um, they're used already in some ways. Um, so as I say, there's a recent big objective to make greater use in economic statistics. Um, there's also simultaneously a push to use for population and demographic statistics. Um, but interestingly, it seems that these two fields have grown up separately. Um, so uh, it seems that the economic statistics has to make its own theory up 
Um, and luckily, we have uh, a project, which I'll talk about in a second, which has helped us to do that within Europe a little bit. And a lot of the content from this course um, will come from the, the, the work developed in that project. Um, in terms of the drivers for using um, admin data more, I talked about just the expectation, the fact that uh, businesses feel they already gave the information to the government in one way or another, and they don't feel they want to give it again in a survey. But as well as that, um, there's a big pressure on everyone um, in government, really, to reduce budgets, um, reduce the amount of money we spend on anything um, for government, um, but at the same time keep the quality. There's often in the UK, I don't know if you have it also uh, in the Basque country, we have this saying that we want more for less. And this is really the push that we have, is to produce more statistics, because there are ever-growing, increasing demands on statistics, but to do all of that for less money, less resource. Um, and of course, you can't keep using traditional methods. So I was, just going, I was just saying, I'll repeat in case you didn't hear first time, that as well as the budgetary concerns that we have to produce statistics uh, more cheaply, we also have um, a requirement quite often not to place as much burden on businesses. So when we send out questionnaires, we have burden on businesses um, because of the time they have to spend filling them in. And at least in the UK, and I think uh, common across Europe, there's a requirement to try and reduce that burden. So for both of these reasons, it can be useful to use admin data to produce statistics uh, with less reliance on surveys. The problem in doing this is that we don't have a perfect framework, a perfect solution to just take these admin sources um, and use them for statistics to get good quality. Uh, the use of survey statistics has grown up over the last century and there's some really great um, statistical theory which all of the surveys we run is based upon. We can say things about the properties of the statistics we can produce, we can um, create measures of their accuracy. Um, we can make sure that we tailor the statistics to the purposes and to the quality that we need. But for admin data, we don't have such a solid foundation of statistical theory. Um, so it's much more difficult to be able to do things. And yet we have always this pressure um, to use admin data as much as possible. Um, so this is a problem. But thankfully, we have this project, uh, European Statistical System Network Project. Um, called SNET for short, um, completely based upon the, the idea of using admin data and accounts data for economic statistics. Um, this is a project I was heavily involved in. Uh, ran from 2009 to 2013. Uh, involved eight different European countries um, and covered lots of different uh, topics. And on the next slide, I'll um, show you the topics the course covers. And actually, they mirror fairly closely the topics which are covered by the SNET. In case you want to know more about the SNET itself, there's a, a website uh, which still has all of the main reports on. Uh, you have the URL there on the slide, and it's in, in the notes as well, I think. Um, so lots of inf more information there. Um, just to say, I sort of went through this big introduction, in case it's not clear to everyone what we mean when we, we talk about admin data. Um, just, just very quickly to say we, talk, we mean any data which is um, collected for purposes which aren't primarily statistical. So generally speaking, we talk about um, things like tax data, maybe accounts data as well, usually data uh, collected by government for some purpose which isn't statistical. And the idea is to reuse that for statistical purposes. Of course, potentially, that definition could be wider and wider and could just be any data that you can get hold of which wasn't originally collected for statistical purposes. Um, and in these recent times, we even have this new concept of big data which is something slightly separate, but it's the kind of information that you can get, uh, for example, when people use social media and they leave some data behind. Um, things like Twitter, you can have a way of finding out the kind of words people use when they um, write messages on Twitter that can be used for analysis. We don't really touch on this topic here. It's a slightly separate thing. But just to say that um, you could view that as being a source of admin data as well, if you can find a way to capture it. So the whole concept of admin data, it's potentially a very wide one. But so far, a lot of the research has focused mainly on things like tax data. Um, so just to touch on the schedule then, and I think in terms of the way that this is going to work, we're going to keep going till 11 o'clock and have a coffee break. That's right. I don't actually see any clock in here. So if we get towards 11 o'clock and I'm still talking, feel free to wave. <laughs> um, 
So we're going to start off just by looking at some of the main admin data sources for economic statistics. Uh, there are some really common ones, uh, which we're going to focus on a lot in the course, but there are a few other ones which are used for very specific purposes as well. Um, we're then going to just start to introduce the kind of possible uses of admin data for economic statistics, um, how they can be used, um, how they're already being used. Um, of course, if you have admin data, then quite often you're going to need to integrate it um, in some way, um, especially because, as we'll find out, it tends to be necessary to use um, some statistical data at the same time as the admin data in order to get a good result. Um, so to do that, we need to integrate the data in some way. Sometimes it's fairly straightforward, sometimes there are problems. So we look at those cases. OK, so once we have the data integrated, um, we can't just go straight ahead and use it to produce statistics. We need to also have a look and make sure we're happy the data are clean. Um, there's a misconception that because a lot of the admin data we use, like tax data, are produced for official purposes, you think, OK, people aren't going to make mistakes in their tax data, or the government's going to check and they're going to make sure there's no errors in the tax data. But let me tell you, that's not correct. There, there are errors in that data set still. Um, and of course, if you allow the errors to feed through into the statistics you produce, then you're going to have um, some big issues with quality. So we need a method to detect any suspicious values in the data. Um, and once we detect the, data, the, the suspicious values, obviously, we need to decide what to do with them, whether it's getting rid of them altogether or perhaps treating them in some way so they can be usable. Um, so we have uh, a, sort of a, a large section where we're going to talk about that in some detail. Um, then going to move on to thinking about, OK, how do we design a sample um, for uh, producing statistics based on admin data? If you just use purely admin data, of course, it's very straightforward. You just use it, you add it up, that's the end. Um, but most likely, you can't do anything as simple as that because the data just aren't exactly how you need it. So you need to have some idea of how you're going to combine admin and survey data. Um, so we look at a few different options uh, for sample designs. And in a sense, that's going to introduce then um, the following two sections where we look at estimation methods. And the estimation method really will depend on what the sample design was um, and how you combine the admin and the, and the survey data. Um, so then there are two main types of European statistics regulations um, which are used. I, hope, I don't know if you're all familiar with these, but I can talk about them when we get there if you're not. Um, structural business statistics, which is an annual um, statistical uh, requirement for very detailed financial data. And the short-term business statistics regulation, um, which is for monthly and quarterly short-term outputs, which just give a short-term indication of the state of the economy. Um, so these are two key statistical requirements which um, every country has to produce statistics on. Traditionally, we use surveys, um, but the idea here is to look at how we can use admin data in these two cases. Um, and these were the two main focuses of the SNET project. We're thinking of ways to, um, to solve the problem of using admin data in these cases. Um, so these are the, est are the estimation issues we're going to look at. Probably we're going to get to these. In terms of timing, I guess we'll probably get to about sec the end of section six by the end of today. Um, but it's the first time I gave this course, so it's a little bit, uh, we'll see how the timing goes. Um, if at any point you want me to go into any more detail on anything, feel free to stick your hand up and let me know. Um, so once we produce statistics, um, it's nice to be able to know what the quality of those statistics are. Um, we don't always do this on surveys, but at least we should always uh, accompany our survey statistics with very detailed quality information so the users know exactly what they're getting. Um, and it's important to do the same for anything based on admin data. Um, but again, because we don't have the statistical theory to back that up, um, it can be more difficult. Um, when it comes to survey statistics, one very common quality indicator is the coefficient of variation, um, which um, is just a measure of variance. This concept doesn't really exist when you have admin data in the same way, so you need to try and find an alternative. And we did quite a large amount of work on trying to find the best way to solve that problem. And, and there are a few different, different solutions um, which we'll talk about. And then, of course, when we get to the end of the course, we'll have a summary. OK. Hope that all sounds OK to everyone. Um, it might be quite difficult with all the, the, the language and the number of people, but if you do have any important questions, if anything isn't clear, then please feel free to let me know and stick your hand up or something.
Okay, so um, as I said before, uh, lots of the material here is influenced from and drawn by drawn from the um, SNET project, um, and some of the information here comes specifically from Work Package One. So, if you wanted to know more about this information, you can look at the Work Package One part of the uh, of the SNET website. Um, and this is just thinking about some of the main administered data sources which are available for economic statistics. Uh, some of these are very common, um, some of them less so. But in a sense, it's going to give us um, a way to introduce the main sources which we look at on the course. Um, okay, one thing to bear in mind is, um, in theory, we have huge numbers of data sets across government um, which are collected for all sorts of different purposes, some of them for tax purposes, um, not just for tax, though, for e every kind of reason you can think of. All the different government departments have their own data sets. They even have their own statisticians, probably. Um, and there's a sort of uh, an idea that, OK, this data is available. We can just go out there and share it and use it straight away. But the availability of that data to the statistics office and the legal ability to share that data really differs from one country to the next. So I'm not sure how it is in Spain. But in the UK, it's very difficult to just say, OK, um, you're the tax office. I'm going to take that data set. I'm going to use it for statistics. Um, so actually, we need to think that even though these sources might exist in practice, um, there can be a big issue in getting hold of them for the use of statistics. Um, in the UK, we have um, a recent piece of legislation which says we have the right to ask if we want some data. But it's not as simple as just getting it. You have to go through a big parliamentary um, procedure to actually get hold of the data. In some countries it's like this, in other countries it's much more open and you can use the data very easily. So you just need to bear in mind what the legal um, uh, state is in each country. Um, okay. Having said that, there are some sources which generally are already available and already used by the statistics office. Um, we're going to discuss three main courses as we go through the, um, through the course really. Uh, probably the biggest one is value added tax uh, or VAT. Um, so, uh, well, I'll, I'll come on and talk about the details in, in the next slide. Uh, there's a source, social security data, uh, which is data, um, gives data on employment um, uh, from sort of people's jobs. And then company accounts data. Um, so these are the uh, data which businesses uh, produce as their accounts, and some of this is uh, publicly available. Um, so we'll talk about each of those in, in turn, but also after we discuss these main sources, just look at actually what's used in practice for those two main statistics regulations, the SBS and the STS, um, because there are some other specific sources used there as well across Europe. And one of the big purposes of Work Package 1 of, this, uh, of the SNET project was actually just to do a stock take of what all the different data sources are that are being used at the moment across the European statistical system. So it's just a very quick summary of what those sources are. But yes, yeah, starting with probably the main source we're going to discuss as we go through the course, uh, which is value-added tax, or VAT. Um, and this is uh, a source which is widely available to statistics offices across Europe and actually across the world. Sometimes it has a different name in different uh, parts of the world, but it's essentially the same thing. Um, and this is the, uh, obviously the tax which uh, businesses have to pay on their, their products. Um, uh, the rate sort of varies, obviously, across countries. Um, so it's widely available already. There's a historic use of it um, to update business registers, this kind of thing. Um, so it's more about making a better use of that data um, rather than actually getting access to a new source. And as I say, it's been the focus of a, of a lot of uh, the recent research um, into the use of admin data in business statistics. The key variable is turnover. Um, and this is one of the reasons it's so useful because for short-term statistics, turnover is one of the most important variables um, which we produce. So you might also know this as t sales, um, same kind of concept. There might be other variables available. Um, and again, this is something which tends to vary from one country to another. In the UK, we have a variable called expenditure. Um, when we sort of talk to other European countries, we found that quite often the same variable exists, but sometimes it has a different name. Um, in uh, the Netherlands, they call it uh, something like value added. I'm um, not sure if that makes any more sense, but it's basically to do with the amount the business uh, spends, um, whereas the turnover is the amount that they get in. So it's the opposite side of the coin. Um, in some countries, there are even more variables available than that. 
but turnover is by far the most useful one, so we're going to focus most of our discussion on turnover. Um, most businesses for most countries provide this information quarterly. Um, there are cases where you get monthly data from a lot of businesses, um, but that's quite rare. Um, there are cases where you get annual data instead, which is obviously not very useful for short-term statistics. Um, but the fact that it's mainly quarterly is, of course, problematic if you want to produce monthly outputs, and a lot of the short-term uh, outputs are monthly. Uh, so we're going to think about how we might solve that problem a bit later in the course. Um, but for now, just the main point is that um, most of the businesses give the data quarterly. Um, I may just quickly use these, this board, if there's a pen somewhere. All of these pens are fine to use, I guess. <laughs> okay, so um, as I say, the, the way that we have this data really differs from one country to another. Um, I think uh, how complex it is varies a lot from country to country. I just want to share with you, just by way of exa an example of how difficult it can be to use admin data, the situation we have in the UK, which I think is it's not unique, but it's one of the more complex uh, reporting structures for VAT data. Um, so we have um, basically 90% of the data um, are quarterly. Which seems fine if you want to produce quarterly statistics. You have most of the businesses, that's no problem. But actually there are three separate reporting patterns which we observe. Um, so for, it doesn't split up exactly into three, but for some businesses, um, they report January, February, March. Okay. And then for another set of businesses, they report February, March, April. And for the final set of businesses, March, April to May. Obviously, that, that, that then repeats throughout the year. So even though we have 90% of businesses are quarterly, um, if you actually want to use this data to produce quarterly statistics, um, say for the quarter January to March, you can see that you only have all of the data available for this chunk of businesses. And then probably you just had this sort of November, December, January available from this business is here, and then the um, December to February available for these businesses here. So to actually make sense of that overlapping periodicity, it's really difficult. You have to employ some special techniques to even approximate it, and then maybe the thing you get out at the end isn't very accurate. So it's, it's, even though it seems like a really useful source, um, it has some big challenges. Just to note as well that the, um, the monthly data, the, so the 90% here is quarterly, um, and that's quite common that you have a big chunk of quarterly uh, responders and a few businesses that report monthly. You might think, okay, I can make use of that monthly data to help me produce monthly statistics, but actually the monthly businesses tend to be very different characteristics to the quarterly ones because they tend to choose themselves to report monthly. And the reason they might do that is because they want to get some perhaps some tax back, some tax rebate because they pay too much or something like this. So anyway, the main point is it's uh, potentially a very, very useful source, but it has a lot of problems we need to deal with. And we'll obviously talk about how we might do that as we go through the course. Um, I just touched on already the fact that the VAT turnover is, is already commonly used to update the business register. It tends to be the key um, source that we use for business register turnover. Um, across Europe. Um, and it's also used through that register variable for activities such as calibration. Uh, so producing survey weights to get higher quality estimates. Uh, we might use it for imputation as well. And um, we'll look in, in a bit more detail a bit later on what some of those uses are. Um, as I say, this is going to be probably the main source we talk about. Okay, so the other big source, which gives us, I suppose, the other main half the other main part of the short-term um, statistics information is social security data. Um, this is the key source of employment data for statistics offices. Um, again, it's used commonly to update the register and give you the register employment variable. Um, it tends to be available either monthly or quarterly. Fortunately, we don't observe this kind of 
uh, unusual reporting pattern, very commonly with uh, social security data. It's a little bit simpler uh, than that. And I think part of the reason why we've seen a lot of research with VAT data, and actually not so much with social security data, is that it's quite simple. You don't need to do as much work um, to produce statistics from it. Uh, employment itself as a variable is a lot um, less vol volatile than turnover. Um, obviously, um, employment doesn't tend to vary much between, I don't know, say naught and a few thousands for many businesses, whereas turnover can obviously go up to millions and billions, depending on the, on the business, much more volatile. Um, so it's, uh, it's quite an easy variable to use in a sense. Um, when it came to the SNET, we sort of took the opinion that the potential uses of employment for economic statistics basically mirror those of turnover. Um, but of course, you need both variables to produce your short-term outputs. But the, uh, the idea was that if you can solve the problem for turnover using, using VAT, then it's very straightforward to then extend it to use employment from social security. There aren't really any additional challenges. And actually, in most cases, it's, it's more easy to use. Um, so those, those two sources are quite similar um, in a sense. And as I said, um, the social security is also used for the business register, so we can also use it for calibration, imputation, and all the rest of it. A very different source of data, but one which potentially is very, very rich and has a lot of variables, uh, is company accounts data. So businesses are required to complete annual company accounts um, in most countries. Um, and those, in theory, those company accounts can, can contain a very wide range of financial variables, which actually relate very closely to the data required for the SBS, the Structural Business Statistics Requirements, so the main annual um, business statistics requirement of European countries. So <clears throat> they often contain a very wide range of financial variables, but this is actually dependent on the size of business. So this isn't a perfect source either, unfortunately, um, because bigger businesses are required to produce um, and give basically a full set of accounts um, and make that available. But smaller businesses have a much lesser requirement. They only need to give a, a very summarized um, production of their accounts. So it means that the data that we can get for those businesses don't have the same rich choice of variables and they can't give us everything we need for the SBS output. Um, so even though there is big potential, um, it doesn't have everything we need. Um, as well as that, um, the way that businesses produce their accounts, it can differ a lot from one business to the other. It basically depends on the accountant for that business um, because the way you produce accounts, um, it isn't a, a, an exact science. It's open to interpretation on exactly the best way to record that information. Um, that purely depends on the way the accountant, I guess, was trained or how they view the accounts. So it means it's quite a troublesome data source because you need to have an accounting background, an accounting understanding to take that accounts data and convert it um, into some economic statistics um, in, the, in the way that uh, is useful for you. The names of the variables, the way the variables are set out, are completely different in um, company accounts to what you often need for economic statistics. And as I say, you need that expertise. I don't really go into it in a lot of detail on the rest of the course, um, but there was a work package uh, in the SNET, Work Package 7, and the um, exact purpose of Work Package 7 was to examine the difference uh, between the definitions of variables in accounts and the definitions of statistical variables and try and see which ones you could draw a match, whether it's a sort of one-to-one -one match. Okay, this variable in accounts, it means exactly the same as this statistics variable. Or if you need to combine a few different accounts variables in some way to produce a statistics variable. Um, or if actually you can't make any connection at all, even though it sounds a bit like what you're looking for, it doesn't actually give you the data you want. Um, and there's basically a big report which literally just lists all of those different outcomes. Um, so it's quite easy. It compares uh, specifically the IFRS accounting regulation, if that's something that any of you are familiar with, with the SBS statistics uh, regulation and just says how they match. Um, so I guess the first thing that you need to do if you want to use company accounts data is to understand what those links are, what's actually possible from your data. Um, uh, and then you can potentially use it. Although even if you've done that, there is still one stumbling block um, because the way the accounts are produced, um, a lot of the 
things like balance sheets, the headline data is available out electronically in most countries, but it's very rare to have what they call the notes available electronically. And unfortunately, it's the notes to the accounts where you get a lot of the very specific detailed financial data, which you're not likely to get from any other admin source. Um, so we don't really have a big solution for doing that at the moment. Um, there are situations where that data is available in an electronic format, um, for example, a spreadsheet or something like this. But even in there, it's, it tends to be um, in some kind of handwritten or sort of written in words, basically, rather than in numbers. You can't really just pull it out and use it as data without spending an enormous amount of time um, for each business, which isn't realistic. So it's, it's not perfect, but potentially at least there's some really high quality data in there. And it might be that you can get similar types of data the comp to company accounts data from other sources. Um, in the UK, a lot of these accounts variables and data go into the corporation tax data we have. Um, and in some countries, there is legal access to that corporation tax data, um, and that can be another way to get the same information. In the UK, we don't have it yet, but maybe one day. OK, so that's the accounts data. Um, and then this is just by way of a quick summary. I'm not going to go into any detail on these um, sources. But this is specifically the information that was um, collected by this Work Package 1 project of the SNET, where they basically went out to each European country, to the statistical agency of each European country, and said, OK, for these SBS and STS regulations, which admin sources do you use um, in the production of statistics? Um, and the information in there actually talks about both direct and indirect uses. I'm not going to cover both here because um, probably you'll get bored. But just to say that these are the ones which are used directly, which means that uh, rather than just using them for calibration or whatever, they're used um, specifically as the statistical output, at least for part of the population. So annexes one to four are basically just the main part of the SBS regulation, which cover most of the main variables and the main part of the economy. So in those cases, they, it's very common to use social security data for employment variables, VAT for turnover variables, um, and the published accounts, all those three which I talked about. Also, some countries use corporate tax um, to get a wide range of financial variables. Personal income tax is like a, a different way to get employment information. But also some of the detailed financial variables can be available from the chambers of commerce or from professional associations. It's not the case that every country uses all of these. Th these are just the instances of possible sources which uh, some countries use. Um, the rest of the SBS regulation goes into a lot of financial detail. Um, just to say that there are sources from things like regulatory authorities. Sometimes statistical agencies can get information from a central bank. Um, we talked about the other sources already. So this is the insurance sector. For credit institution sector, um, again, central bank and regulatory authorities. For this case, it makes sense that the main source is the central bank. Regulatory authorities provide pension information. Um, and for business services, um, it's a range of the, of the sources we already saw. This is just to give a flavor, really, of the fact that actually some of this stuff is a bit more commonplace than you might think. There are some very specific um, uses of admin data which are already ongoing. And then finally, the business demography, um, it uses a range of information from um, income tax, VAT, and, and corporate tax. So that was the SBS, which is the annual statistical regulation and the short-term statistics. Um, there is already quite a lot of use of VAT for turnover variables, but it doesn't cover the whole population, as we're going to see a bit later. Um, so in some cases, some countries get information also from regulatory authorities, and from the customs and excise on turnover. Employment is mainly the social security or the personal income tax, which we already talked about. And as I said, it's quite an easy, simple source. And then a lesser part of the short-term statistics regulation is the production prices and costs. Um, and for that, we have these specific sources, customs and excise. You might get information from the local authorities, so from the local parts um, of government, or from other governmental bodies and from regulatory authorities. So that, that last part really just to give a flavour and an idea of the fact that there are lots of specific sources which already are being used. 
But as I said, the main ones we're going to focus on are the VAT and the company accounts. But for the VAT, you can pretty much copy over everything I say, and you can pretty much do the same for Social Security as well. Okay, so there are the sources that we have available. So just to think then, by way of introduction of the potential uses we might make of admin data. Some of these are quite straightforward um, and others need a lot more work, uh, research work to try and build up a, a proper uh, statistical framework for the users. Um, so we're just going to give a brief summary here and of course we're going to then discuss a lot of the topics in a lot more detail as we go through the course. Pardon me. Um, first just going to talk about the business register um, which might be something you're already familiar with so it might just be by way of a reminder, um, or if you're not, then it'll just give you a bit of detail on that. So the business register is traditionally the, the main use we've made of admin data. Talk about indirect uses, which again is something we've done a little bit traditionally. Um, and then I guess the big new thing, the thing we're going to focus on is the direct use of admin data for, uh, for statistical purposes. Um, so historically, uh, Admin data mainly have been used to construct the business register. Um, so turnover and employment are the main things here. And as I say, they come from VAT and Social Security. But we also get other information from the sources. Um, things like the industry or the activity status of the business um, can come from either VAT or Social Security. Um, it might be that one of those two sources collects higher quality industrial information than the other. Um, it might be that they're both not very good quality at all, but it might, they might be the only thing we have available for the business until they've been in a survey. Um, if you, I don't know how much you know about industrial classifications, but they tend to be updated over time as the economy changes, at least in the UK, and I know this is the case in a lot of other countries. It was the case that the, um, the tax office, which collects the information from VAT and Social Security, they used a very old, outdated version of the classification used for industry. Uh, the NACE classification, um, if you've heard of that. So it means that when they try and classify businesses to an industry, sometimes they get it okay, but a lot of the time it's not very accurate, it doesn't match up with what we want. Um, so actually it's not always very good quality industry information, but if we didn't have anything else, then it's the only thing we can use. Actually more recently we've, met, we've found a way to improve that. Um, but it's something to be aware of, that even though this data is available, um, it's not always of the best quality. Um, the sources, the admin sources can also give you information about business status. They can tell you sometimes if the business is trading or if they are dormant, if they've ceased to exist. And of course, the very fact that a business has been born and started to exist um, can be indicated by their um, e existence on an admin source. So there's lots of very rich information um, in an admin source uh, which can be directly put onto the business register. Um, and the business register then can be used as the main sampling frame for business surveys. Um, so obviously massively important. Um, the variables then can be used to improve the efficiency of survey outputs in various ways. Um, we're going to look at some of those indirect uses on the next slide. Um, and business register data is also occasionally used um, to actually provide information on the business survey population itself, simply by aggregating up uh, that information um, and saying, okay, we approximate there are this many businesses in the population at the moment. They have this kind of characteristic. So it's very approximate. It's not, prop it's not um, quality statistics, but it just gives an idea for what's happening. Um, and sometimes we do that kind of uh, demographic analysis, I guess, on the business survey population directly from the register. Um, it's worth bearing in mind that often the business register is compiled just of the businesses which exist on um, both the VAT and the Social Security data. Um, actually, not every single business in the population is covered by this um, because there are businesses that are exempt from paying these kind of taxes. Um, very small businesses, usually with one or two employees. So it's not a perfect sampling frame. It's not a perfect representation of the statistical population. Um, but for most purposes, it's good enough uh, for what we need. But it's worth always bearing in mind these shortcomings because obviously these shortcomings are going to also affect 
any direct use of the admin sources that we're going to use. Um, so many of the uh, indirect uses of admin data are already commonplace, um, and the admin data itself are often sourced directly through the business register. Um, as I say, the turnover and employment variables particularly. Um, so uh, just to touch on what some of those main things are, um, and the idea here is that we can use the, these variables to improve the quality and efficiency of our economic statistics. And I think in most countries, we already do most of these things. They're not new, although potentially um, it might be possible to make greater use of admin sources than we currently do for these purposes, um, because so far it's mostly just the turnover and employment variables where we do this. Um, so stratification, of course, so just splitting up the population into homogeneous groups can just lead to higher quality um, estimates in terms of the sampling. Calibration, um, so using the, uh, the admin data variables themselves um, as a way to improve the estimation um, by simply uh, ensuring that our aggregates um, recover those, uh, the totals of those um, admin data variables on the register. Um, for comparison in editing, so editing is an important part of, uh, of survey data uh, processing. So when you get the data in, you want to make sure that there aren't any errors in there. Um, the only sort of simplest way to do that is to compare the values you get with what you expected. Um, and one of the ways we can find out what we expected is by going to the admin data source and saying, OK, my survey told me this was the turnover, but on the business register, the turnover was only 1% of that size, so clearly something's gone wrong somewhere. Um, and it can be a useful way of identifying um, errors. Mm -hmm. um, a little bit more uh, sophisticated than that, admin data variables can be useful um, in constructing what we call selective editing um, parameters. I'll touch a little bit on selective editing when we come to the data cleaning parts of the course. Um, so useful for editing, and also to assist with imputation as well. So imputation is when we don't get full response from businesses and we want to impute a value instead. Um, so one of the main sources for um, being, being able to construct that imputation can be the business register variables. It's actually the case for both editing and imputation that using previous responses from the survey tends to work better for economic statistics. But in some cases, you don't have that previous data available. So in a sense, the, the admin variables on the register are used, used as a sort of a backup option. Uh, for those cases. Um, so we actually already use admin variables to improve the quality and efficiency of economic statistics. And you could view that in itself um, as being a way of reducing the amount of surveying we do and reducing the burden on business already. Because if we have a set quality requirement for our statistics, um, then we can match that requirement with a lot less sample if we use these more efficient methods. So we already actually do some of this stuff. Um, it's worth bearing in mind that uh, indirect, where you can't directly use admin data, an indirect use can still fulfill some of your requirement to do more, more for less. OK, but the, really the big thing that we're interested in is direct use of admin data in the production of statistics. I mentioned um, in the introduction that actually this did hit, happen historically, um, where there was a necessity due to a lack of budget for surveys. It also happened, has been happening for a while in some countries where there are high quality population registers. Um, for example, the Scandinavian countries often are picked out as being sort of the leaders in having these fantastic population registers where it's just normal for everyone to record all their information and um, for the government to have access to everything. Um, unfortunately, for most countries, we don't have the luxury. But just to say that it, it's not a brand new thing that you might think, it's not something that we've just started to think about. Um, but it, it is new in a lot of countries. Um, so the thing that's new, I guess, is to make sure that when we use admin data, we think about what the quality implications are of the statistics we produce based on that data. And to do that, we need to start developing theory. Uh, and there have been a few attempts in the literature to develop theory. Um, none of them have been quite conclusive yet, but I guess the research work, it still carries on. Um, I'm sure at some point, someone will come up with a sort of a grand unified theory of using admin data for economic statistics. Um, but of course, the equivalent theory for survey statistics, it took decades to develop, so maybe it's still early years in that specific theory. So at the moment, um, the main use 
is based on more practical applications. Uh, we still need to make sure that our um, statistics are backed up with good quality, um, a foundation, I guess, in some kind of theory, but it's not a, a unified theory where we can draw out a lot of estimation criteria and, uh, and develop things theoretically. It's based more on a combination of the theory we do have and some practical testing that the quality is, is maintained. And I'll discuss how that works. Um, one thing we found in practice is that very regularly um, it's impossible to replace an entire survey. So we have this ambition maybe that we have these surveys we use for short-term statistics or structural business statistics or whatever it is, and we just want to use VAT or some other admin source and get rid of the survey altogether. Um, but the, the truth is, if you want the quality of your statistics to be maintained, you just can't do that. Um, you need some kind of a mixed source approach where you greatly reduce your reliance on surveys, um, but you still need to have some kind of survey information in there, um, whether it's to cover the most important businesses or to help drive some kind of model which you um, create based on the admin data. Um, you need some kind of survey in there, and there are lots of different ways of doing that. Um, and the sample design section of the course will look at all of those. Um, and of course, hopefully it goes without saying, anything you do where you're changing the way that you produce economic statistics, it's really important to check the quality implications of what you've done before you implement it. Um, you can't just sort of ideally at least take an admin source, try out a few things which sound sensible, and then just uh, release that without having an idea of what the quality implications are because at the end of the day all of these economic statistics are used to drive economic policy, uh, used for all sorts of really important reasons. So if you, if you just give very poor quality data then you're going to um, have a large effect, negative effect um, on how that works. Um, so we'll talk a little bit about some of the evaluation criteria um, that we use. Um, okay. One thing that's important is to be realistic about the use of admin data. And this is something which varies from country to country, depends on um, all sorts of things, the availability of data, how similar the admin data are to what you're looking for. Um, but it's the case that in some cases, the direct use of admin data just isn't possible, whether it's just for part of the population, for certain variables. Um, so you need to realize, I guess, anytime you're gonna investigate admin data, that it's gonna be really useful somewhere somewhere else you're going to have to have a different solution. So these are the kind of problems which we might find. Um, so quite often the admin data will not cover the whole population. Um, so obviously the admin data weren't produced with the specific intention of producing statistics for your uh, particular domain. Um, and it's natural they're not going to match up exactly in terms of the businesses which are involved in both cases. Uh, there's going to be some businesses in your admin data which you don't need and there's going to be some gap where you need some businesses which weren't in the admin data. So you need to find a way to deal with that. If the gap's big, then you'd probably need to do something other than using admin data. You need some combination, as I said. If it's a small gap, maybe you can just understand the size of it and live with it or make a small adjustment. Um, it's often the case that the variables you find in admin data have different definitions to those required for statistics. That's not just for the company accounts data, which I talked about, but even things like the turnover you get from VAT, and um, the way that the tax is reported in turnover in VAT is different from the way that we often require turnover um, for statistical purposes. If you're using turnover for, for example, the retail sector, then you have a very um, definite retail turnover definition, which is totally different from what you get from a VAT data set. So you have to think, okay, can I live with that small difference in definition? Do I need to adjust the data in some way so that it conforms to what I was looking for? Or is it so far apart that I can't do anything at all? So you need to think about that. There's a sort of subtle point um, in that we can quite often match fairly well between admin data sets and statistical data sets, um, but the match isn't often one-to-one. -one. So when you have complex businesses which are split into different structures for reporting, um, the way they're, they're split up, it's often not the same for the admin source um, as it is for statistic sources. So for example, um, if, a, if a very large business decides to have 10 different reporting um, structures for VAT data, maybe it only had five for statistics, and those links aren't necessarily one-to-one, -one, you need to try and deal with that problem um, to be able to use the data effectively. Um, 
it might be that you've got access to a large number of different admin data sets and you can get lots of variables. Um, but for a particular survey, maybe you have 100 variables for a structural business um, statistics survey, but actually you can only get the admin data for 80 of those variables. What do you do about the other 20? Obviously, you can only stop surveying businesses if you can replace all of those variables. Um, assuming you definitely need all these 100 variables, what are you going to do about those ones that aren't available? Um, you could just have a much smaller survey, but then you still need to ask the same number of businesses the questions. So even though you have some reduction in the, the survey costs, some reduction in the burden, you're still asking the same number of businesses the same, some, some, some kind of question. So the question is, is there a way that you can model those missing variables based on the information you do have so that you don't need to collect information at all from the businesses? And that's one of the problems that was uh, asked uh, in the SNET. So we're going to look at some of those estimation approaches that might work. Um, and another big estimation problem, which is very common, is that the admin data aren't available quickly enough, or they're only partially available. I mentioned before that we have a messy reporting structure sometimes for VAT data, but that's not the only problem with VAT data. If you want to use it for short-term statistics, for monthly statistics, um, we, quite, we often need those statistics to be available within a very short time period after the reference period. So we might produce statistics for January, um, perhaps in sort of early March or something like this. That's quite a short time gap. It, often it takes about a month just to get the data, the VAT data from the tax office. So by the time you have the data, it's already too late. So what do you do about that? Can you do some kind of forecasting with the data that you have? Um, is there a way to solve that problem? Um, sometimes you might have just 50% of the data set available on time. So then the question is, can you use that 50% to estimate the rest of the population? <coughs> Um, so the various different approaches to deal with that problem. And the periodicity, I guess I already mentioned up here, sometimes you have quarterly data and you want monthly data. Mm -hmm. Or for annual statistics, you might have a calendar year when you wanted a financial year or vice versa. Um, so again, you need to try and solve that in some way. And really the rest of the course is going to be about how do we solve these problems. Um, if it's straightforward and you just have admin data set gives me everything I need for statistics, basically all you need to do is add it up. Um, and that's your answer. Um, but in reality, you have to solve all of these problems. Um, and that's what the SNET really was there to do. It was there to solve all of these problems. We didn't get a perfect solution in every single case, but we at least had a try to see what's possible. Um, and I guess that's the information that mainly we're going to cover on the course. Um, OK, so as I say, the following chapters will address each of the problems. Um, and it is possible to come up with solutions in many cases. Um, we don't necessarily come up with a perfect solution where we can get rid of all the surveys, but at least we come up with a solution where we can reduce the size of surveys um, for some industries in some, some cases. So, um, In a lot of cases, we use modeling techniques of various types. OK. Right. Um, so in a sense, all, everything I've said so far has been um, introductory. Um, we've talked about the kind of data sources um, and the kind of uses we might make. But now we start to get into the real meat of how do we go about um, using admin data in practice? What are the processing steps we need to go through to use admin data for the production of economic statistics in practice? Um, and the first thing we need to think about is how we integrate uh, data from administrative sources um, with statistical data. Um, okay, so the truth is that to construct statistics from admin data, we usually need to integrate them uh, with statistical data in some way. Um, so uh, even if you have the entire population available, you don't need to do any modeling. Um, if you want to create estimates by industry or by region or by some other kind of um, breakdown, um, then as I said before, the quality of information in terms of industry uh, classification and regional classification that you get from admin sources isn't usually good enough um, to then give you the, uh, the output you need. So even where you have the whole population, you need to do that integration in some way. 
Um, in practice, you probably do need to use some other data sources to come up with high quality outputs. Um, so um, it means that uh, you definitely need to do the matching anyway. Um, so that's fine. Uh, the matching itself um, is often done via the business register. Um, and that's quite straightforward. You already have, if you're using VAT data or social security data, you already have um, historically um, a process for matching those variables onto the business register. And of course, the business register itself already uh, contains the um, unit definitions, the unique identifiers um, for each of the, the businesses in your statistical population. Of course, behind all this, there's a lot of work that's already gone on behind the scenes. Um, it's not the case that those uh, businesses magically get matched. Um, the, when the businesses are first um, born onto the um, admin data sets, um, there's lots of work going on in terms of profiling, matching of addresses, um, and, and names of businesses. Um, there's also often a business register survey, a maintenance survey of some type, which just makes sure that the business that you see in an admin data set is the same as the business which you expected to see in your statistical population. So it's not, not necessarily saying that there is no work to be done in the matching, um, but when compared with um, the kind of matching that takes place in social populations, in demographic populations, where quite often you need to go to a lot of uh, work to do statistical matching, for economic data, often you have already a common unique identifier between the admin data source um, and the uh, statistical source. Um, so at least that part's straightforward, but there are issues with integration. And we're going to talk about linking issues, um, coverage issues, and problems with definition. Um, OK. So as I said before, because of the historical use um, of admin data, we commonly have this unique identifier. Um, but differences in reporting structures often mean that there isn't a one-to-one -one match between the sources. And if there isn't a one-to-one -one match, then you can't necessarily um, work out what the answer is going to be, um, what, you know, what the value is that you need to use for your statistics. Um, four types of links might be found in practice. I might just quickly draw these just to make it a bit clearer. Um, okay, so the first case is where you have one ad admin data uh, linking directly to one statistical unit. Um, so this is obviously very um, desirable. Um, okay. So we have a direct link. Um, so clearly, say this is VAT data, VAT turnover, clearly you can just use that turnover value directly as your statistical turnover value. That's not a problem straightforward. Um, so case one is easy to solve, or well, it's not even a problem to solve. Um, in case two, you might have one admin data unit linking to multiple statistical units. So this happens just because, um, OK, this particular business decides to report all of its VAT information in one go, just for the whole business. But when it comes to reporting statistics, they split into three different arms for whatever purpose. It might be that the business um, covers activity in three separate industries. So they decide to um, perhaps give information on the wholesale part of the business separately to the retail part of the business, separately to um, some production part of the business. So they split up their reporting of statistics into three separate units, um, but they only have the one tax file. So when it comes to actually using this VAT value for statistics, um, say this value here is you know, 10,000, whatever it is. The question is, how do you um, assign that 10,000 uh, to those businesses there? I need to think about solving that problem. I'll talk about some possible solutions uh, in a minute. So that's case two. Case three, 
Um, it's the other way around. So you have multiple admin data units, but only one statistical unit. Um, so in this case, they decide to report their VAT, for example, in three different ways um, for whatever reason, because they want to keep the tax separate for three different parts of their business. But in terms of when they produce reports on statistics, they actually find that it's quite convenient just to give a single figure. Perhaps they don't want to go to the bother of splitting out their data when they send it to the statistics office or whatever the reason is. Um, actually, this case is quite straightforward. All you need to do is add up these A, B, and C, and that gives you the information that you need for your, your unit. So that's not, not anything to worry about. Um, and then case four is where you have a many-to-many -many match. Um, it might even be to some other split as well. So in this case, it's really messy. You have to do some real hard thinking about how you're going to solve that problem. But actually, you can still add up these A, B, and C. You can still create um, a single VAT value here, um, whatever it is, add them up. And then you just need to split it out into the four statistical units. So actually, you are back to this case two. So the one that we really need to solve is case two. How do we split that up? Um, and there's um, sort of different ways of doing that. I think I mentioned uh, some possible solutions on the next slide. So of course, one thing that you might like to do is contact the business and say, OK, we have one figure from you from VAT. But then when you report statistics, you give us information on three separate units. Um, please, can you tell me actually how that VAT figure uh, corresponds to those three units? Well, that would be fantastic. But uh, in most countries, the statistics office doesn't have the legal um, ability to be able to contact a business and ask them about their tax data. So that's not an option. Uh, even if they did, then it obviously it would be a very time consuming and expensive operation. And you'd be losing some of those uh, efficiencies, which you were trying to use admin data to help with in the first place. Um, so recontacting them probably isn't an option. Um, this actual topic wasn't covered by the SNET, but of course it's still a big problem anytime you use statistics. So in the UK, we did our own work uh, testing methods on how you deal with this problem, um, specifically for VAT data uh, for, for turnover. And we tried three separate approaches um, using uh, an equal split amongst the units. Um, So if we have 10,000, obviously I chose a random figure that doesn't divide by three very easily. Um, so if we have 3,000, the equal split would be you know, 3,333.3 for each one. OK, it's very straightforward. It's very approximate. Um, but at least it gives you some data you can use. Um, you'd kind of hope it's not the best method. Uh, but it's, um, it does give you an answer. Uh, and maybe in some cases it works okay. You might think that, okay, these three arms of the business probably are very different, but maybe when you do this across a whole industry, the error that you get in doing it kind of cancels out. If it's a random error, you might try and justify it that way. So it's a simple approach. Um, maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Um, hopefully we can do better. So. Another approach is to do it proportional to employment. Um, so if we knew the employment figures for these businesses um, where, say, business B had 10 employment, C had 100, uh, and D had 1, for the sake of argument, um, so then Approach C is just to actually think about the relative sizes of those parts of the business um, and split that out. Um, so here you'd have um, 10 over 111 multiplied by 10,000. And similarly, a 
And you can see that this is going to give you a very different split to just simply dividing it by three. And you'd hope if you have a good relationship between employment and turnover, which often you find is the case in economic statistics, um, then you'd hope that this is going to give you a more accurate estimate of how that VAT value splits um, into those three arms of the business. Um, so this is, this is a, quite a sensible method. Um, a method which uh, we've used um, historically in the UK is to actually use a ratio of the business register turnover value and uh, employment. So in a sense, this business register turnover value has come from previous uh, VAT data. So it's a little bit of a cyclical method, um, but it's one which we've, we've kind of used in practice. Um, of course, um, I didn't mention before, but the, the business register variables turnover and employment, whilst they mainly come from admin sources, they do get updated sometimes from survey sources as well. So you might think that the business register turnover just has a slightly extra information in terms of the split amongst units. Um, so we use this turnover over employment. So if the, uh, I'm out of columns slightly, but if the turnover value on the business register um, for these units, um, let's say, 100 here, sorry, 1,000 here, maybe 200 here, um, and 1,000 here. So you can see in this proportional to employment approach, we've made an assumption that there's a very strong correlation between employment and turnover. It might be that it's not quite the case um, for this particular business because, um, remember, they split out their reporting unit structure based on... Um, the fact that they report, they, use, they have different arms to their business, so if they have a retail part of the business and a wholesale part of the business, actually it might be that um, in one of those arms of the business there's a very high turnover per employee, and in the other, another part there might be a lower turnover per, per employee. So the idea here in this final method, this ratio method, is to take this ratio of turnover and employment, uh, and then multiply that by the VAT value. Um, okay, and here we have and so apologies it's a little cramped. <laughs> but hopefully you can see that this third method again gives a completely different answer for what your VAT values are going to be. Um, you might think that the third version is the most likely to be the most accurate. But of course, it depends on having this previous turnover split, which itself was driven by the VAT data. So it's because it's a bit cyclical, if you're not sure that what you did in the past was right, then you might just end up kind of perpetuating a previous mistake. So it kind of depends on having a good quality base idea of what that split is, I guess. Um, so the only way to be sure on what the best method is, is to evaluate it in some way. Um, and obviously that's difficult because you don't know the truth about your VAT data. You don't know how it really split into different um, parts, different arms of that business. Um, the one thing that we do have, did have available was some SBS survey data. So that was just for some businesses, obviously. I think our SBS survey is around 60,000 businesses per year, whereas the VAT data is uh, two or three million businesses per year. So Obviously, we just have a small proportion of those businesses, which we can do some kind of test on. But if we assume that the survey data, which obviously is picked um, specifically to be representative of the whole population, so if we assume that that uh, survey data is representative of the population, we can say that if that split of uh, turnover into different units works well for those businesses in the survey, then probably that's the one that works best for the whole population. Then we have a potential evaluation method so what we did was we just tried splitting the VAT data for those businesses which were in both the VAT file and the survey file um, and just compared which one gave us um, the most similar match, basically. Um, and we found that the best method was proportional to employment. 